Okay, so let's go ahead and go over the score sheet first. So the first thing that you want to do um, when you set up your score sheet is first of all put a one or a two on the back of the score sheet. That is going to be your coin toss generally, how that works. That way you don't have to carry a coin with you. Then you want to go ahead and transfer the names of the people that are going to be on your court. So in this instance we've got John and Bill on one team and we've got Dan and Mike on the other team. I generally don't know these people so I want to put some distinguishing feature. You don't have to because if they're wearing a wristband it's not necessarily but it, it, it keeps things a little bit straighter for me. So Dan is going to be the start server. That's why he's fit over here, even start server. So Dan has the wristband. He has a yellow shirt. Mike is the person without the wristband. Um, he has a blue shirt. We're playing two out of three to 11. Because we're playing two out of three to 11, there's a chance we could get to a third game and they'll switch after the first team reaches six points. That's why I put the little hash mark down here between the six and seven on both sides. That reminds me that when the first team gets to six, we're gonna go ahead and switch sides, okay? So when you do the, the coin toss, let's say that Dan and Mike won the coin toss, so their options are to serve, receive, or pick side. Very rarely does a team pick receive. They're generally either gonna pick serve, or side. So let's say in this instance Dan and Mike picked serve. But because this is 2 out of 3 to 11, you're going to circle serve on the first game and on the third game. And over on the other team, you're going to circle serve right here on the, the second game. So first and third and second. That way you don't have to remember who's going to serve after each game. All right, so once you get them on the correct side, you want to orient the score sheet. Again, I don't know these people. I don't know who they are. So it's helpful for me because you're only going to give points to the team that's up at the top. So the serving team is always going to be up top. That's who you're going to be giving points to. So I like to orient the, the clipboard with the clip here, this clip, this metal clip. Sometimes there's a bigger clip that, that comes out over here. Um, and so you want to orient that to the serving team. So in this instance, if this sheet is set up correctly, the serving team, Dan and Mike, should be to my right. Okay? If after you do the coin toss, they're incorrect. So Dan and Mike are going to serve, but they're to my left. All you have to do before the game starts is just switch the sheet around. So now Dan and Mike who are the serving team, they're going to be to my left, which is the correct side. That's where the clip is. Okay? So that's how you're going to set it up. Now we'll go over using the clip. The clip in conjunction with the even and odd is the magic of this score sheet. I recommend that you go out um, any place that sells balloons, helium balloons, they have these clips. These are very, very nice clips. You can just get a clothespin, but these clips work really, really well. Any place that sells helium balloons, you can buy these clips for about 25 cents each. So at the start of the game, okay, Dan's going to be serving. So at the start of the game, the score is going to be 0, 0, 2. So I'm going to put my clip on the number 2 on Dan. He's going to start serving the game. So what happened here is they scored one point and then they lost the rally. So because it was server number two, they're only getting one chance. So after they score their one point and it's a side out, I'm going to put the hash mark here. At the end of each rally, it is critical that you say one of three things. So at the end of each rally, you're either going to say point, which means the serving team won that and they scored a point. You're going to say second server, which means they were on server number one and the serving team lost that rally. Or you're going to say side out, which means that the serving team was on server number two and they lost that rally. That communicates to the other, to all the players what your decision was and what you're going to be marking on the score sheet. You don't want to be thinking, oh, well, that was a second server. 
um, when it was actually a point. So if you say second server and it was actually a point, they'll immediately correct you. So you're keeping everything correct. That's why you're saying uh, either point, second server, or side out at the end of every rally. You let them know what your decision was. If there's any issue, they will let you know. A very critical thing that will help a new referee become a good referee is the most difficult thing for a new referee is to keep the flow of the game going, which means the server is standing there waiting to serve. You're the referee. The server can't serve until you say the score. And you're kind of sitting in there, your head, oh, well, let's see, what's the score again? What's the score? So at the, every time that you say point, second server, side out, after you say that and they're going to get the ball or there's a lag time, you want to start thinking in your head what the score is. So if the score is 1, 0, 2, as soon as you say point, so at the very beginning of the game, Dan served the ball, the score was 0, 0, 2, Dan and Mike won that rally, so you would say point, and immediately you would start thinking in your head, okay, the score is 1, 0, 2. That way, when they're ready, you can go ahead and say the score. You're not having to sit there and think, you're just kind of daydreaming after you write the, the circle the one. So you're going to say point, circle the one, and immediately start thinking, okay, it's one, zero, two, just in your head, so that you're, you're ready to say that as soon as Dan is ready to serve. That will help you out tremendously. You use the lag time, the downtime, to your advantage. So you're all ready to keep the game uh, flowing. So in this instance, um, Dan and Mike won one point. Then they lost the rally. So I'm going to put my little hash mark here. And after the rally, what's going to happen is I'm going to say side out. I'm going to switch the score sheet over. So obviously, forget about what this is. Right now, they have zero points. So because they have zero points, zero is an even number. So I'm going to put my clip on John because John is the correct server. Let's say in this instance right here, they've already played out these points and what have you. So the score is actually six, five. Okay, I would have to put a hash mark here if the score was six, five. So right now, right now, they scored five points and it's a side out. So the score right now, after I say side out, the score is six, five, one. I look and see that six is an even number because six is an even number. I'm gonna put the clip See where it says even? I'm gonna put the clip over here with John is even. I don't look at the people first. I look at the score, okay? So again, um, each time there's a side out, you're gonna to have to rotate the, the, the score sheet. The clip is now facing, so John and Bill will be to my right because I have the score sheet oriented correctly. I see they have six points. So six is an even number. I'm gonna put the clip on number one on even and John in the blue shirt with the wristband should be standing there getting ready to serve. That's how you do it. You look at the score, even or odd, put the clip and then look to see that the correct person is standing there. That's the beauty of this system. Okay, so John's going to serve. John's going to get, let's say, two, three points and then they mess up. They, the serving team loses that rally. The score is 9-5-2. So now all you do is move the clip to whoever wasn't on. You don't have to worry about odd even now. You only worry about the odd and even when there's a side out. You're rotating the sheet. You see, oh, there's five points. And you're going to put the uh, number one on odd. I'm going to look up and make sure that Mike in the blue shirt without the wristband is the server. The reason we do the hash marks is... If there's any issue, let's say the people say I made a mistake or I dropped the clip, maybe I put the clip on the wrong side, and the players bring up that there's some discrepancy. If I have the hash marks, and if I know it's server number one or number two, I can always tell you who the correct server is. So let's say in this instance, okay, Mike is the number one server because the score is five, nine, so when they came back over, their score is odd. The number one server is going to be Mike. And let's say they scored one, two, three, four points. And now, for some reason, I don't, I'm not sure 
Um, I know the score is 991, but I don't know who the correct server is. I, can I know that Mike is the correct server because I can look back and I see my hash marks. I know that when they, it's server number one, and I know that when they came back, Mike was the correct server. So if it's server number one, now Mike has to be the server. That's a little bit more complicated, but it's, it's just the reason that we put the hash marks. If you have the hash marks, somebody can always determine who the correct server is. The beauty of this system also is when you have the clip where it's supposed to be and the players ask you, am I the correct server? Are we on the correct side? So am I the correct server? I can look and I know immediately that Dan in the yellow shirt should be the correct server if my clip is here. So that tells you immediately who the correct server is. That's a much more difficult thing than knowing if they're on the correct side. Knowing if they're on the correct side is very, very easy because if they have nine points, I know that Dan has to be on the left-hand side of the court if he's facing the net. Dan is not going to be where he was on the start of the game. He's going to be on the left-hand side of the court because they have an odd score. If their score is even, Dan's going to be in the start position. If their score is odd, Dan's going to be in the non-start position on the court. Okay, also in the middle of the score sheet is some really good information. Um, it tells you timeouts are one minute. So the timeouts you can register here, timeout number one, number two, and game number one. Between games, there's two minutes. If there's a medical injury, there's 15 minutes max once per player per match. So that 15 minutes means that if I injure myself as a player and I'm ready to go after five minutes, then once I start play again, I can no longer use any more injury timeout. Even though I've only used five of the 15 minutes, once I come back to play, that injury timeout is, is gone for me. My partner can use it, but I can no longer do it. Okay, so when you're playing the game, the following information is critical. So you're gonna say the score, and the saying the score starts each point. And how you do that is first thing that you do after each point, and after you've started in your head what the score is, so you're saying in your head what the score is so that you're ready, first thing you do is look at the receiver. You're not worried as much about the receiver's partner, you're worried to make sure that the receiver is ready to return the serve. So you look at the receiver, then you look at the server, you look at the server's feet, and then you say the score. It's critical that you do that every single time. This is one of the problems that new referees have. So again, the procedure is you look at the receiver, see the receiver's ready, you look at the server, look at the server's feet to make sure that they don't foot fault when they serve, then you say the score. Do that every single time. If the server foot faults, you immediately say foot fault. When the players do call a timeout, you wanna have them ground their paddles. Grounding their paddles just means that they put their paddles on the ground where they will be when they come back from the timeout and the persons that's serving should put the ball underneath their paddle. You need to keep track of the correct server and the correct side. If you see that the incorrect server is gonna serve or that any players are on the incorrect side, you have to wait until the ball is served so if the, if the serving team is incorrect, either the wrong server or they're on the wrong side, the second that the ball is served, you would call fault. Tell them what that fault was. You guys are on the wrong side, okay? Um, and if it was server number one and they were on the incorrect side, you cannot let them do that twice in a row. So if they you know, have a, a moment in lapse of judgment, you tell them they're on the wrong side, you can't let them do the next point on the wrong side again. You have to make sure that you put them on the correct side. Okay? If the receiving team is on the incorrect side, the fault does not occur until the receiving team touches the ball. So if the serving team is incorrect, the second the serving team serves the ball, you call fault. If the receiving team is on the incorrect side, you have to wait until the, re the wrong receiver returns the ball before you can call a fault. 
And again, you're not allowed to correct them unless asked. If you're asked, then you have to correct them and put them in the correct order. If they don't ask, you're not allowed to tell them that they're on the incorrect side. You make no line calls. The players make their own line calls. The only line call that the referee makes is on the serve, if that serve hits the kitchen, then you call that as a fault. But all the other line calls are done by the players. One of the biggest things, again, that new referees have problems with is they want to watch the match. They want to watch the ball. When we do our referee clinic, we stand there next to the referee and tell them, watch the feet, watch the feet, watch the feet. While the point is going on, you don't want them watching the ball. You want them watching the feet in the non-volley zone to make sure that they don't foot fault into the non-volley zone. So again, when you're doing the match, the sign of a good referee, when you, look, when you see the referee and his, his gaze is always down at the line at the non-volley zone, you know that's a good ref. If their gaze is up watching the ball, you know that's not a good ref.